So I've been re-inspired to um, wear the sunglasses after uh, Prom Pretty <laughs> made that awesome video. Um, great channel, you should subscribe to it. Um, although I don't know how many more uh, videos are going up on that channel. Um, today I'm going to talk about Ransom Theory and what it is and the misunderstanding of it and the reaction to the misunderstanding of it. <coughs> and I don't like it when people... <clears throat> well, this document says here, and you can find in Justin Martyr, it says this about ransom and that. And that. I don't care what any of the church fathers say. Citing people like Tertullian or Origen is ridiculous because they're not accepted by the church. And citing anybody from any time doesn't matter because not one person holds orthodoxy. And many of the people of the saints were wrong on some things. I mean, even in the Roman Catholic Church, they considered August or... Um, Aquinas to be wrong on the um, on the Immaculate Conception. He was against it. Bonaventure was for it. So, and he was one of their chief theologians. He's the one that crafted medieval Roman Catholicism. Ransom theory is that Christ came into the world, and um, the ransom was for sin. He almost acted as a sponge for sin. He paid the price for sin itself, not the devil, not God. Um, and Anselm thought, oh, it's paying the price to the devil. Well, why would Christ pay something to the devil, you know, a ransom? And by defin a ran definition, a ransom is something that's taken uh, and by unlawfully, and then it's paid off as the, the, the thing. So it's not, it's not like equal debt or anything. Um, it's you're paying it to a loathsome party it's not I mean ransom is not a deal it's a deal but it's not a, a an honorable one it's one that you you may be honorable in paying it but the other party is not honorable one party is bad uh, <laughs> so he acted as a sponge for sin this is called ransom theory ransom from the sinful acts that we do um, so he thought, oh, well, it's not ransoming people from the devil, it's ransoming them from God. That's the only way which that starts screwing with the Trinity because then it's God coming down to redeem himself at the punishment of God, but God took the punishment. It's really creepy. Um, and then that turns into, well, it's God's wrath that he's taking the punishment from, from that he cannot forgive, and then you get... Then after a while, you get into this limited atonement, also called double predestination from John Calvin, and that's just crazy. So the fundamental misunderstanding of ransom theory is what I think jacks a lot of people up. But we have to remember that that's not the only view of salvation. Uh, we have second Adam, we have moral influence, and then there's many others, and they're all held together simultaneously um, with, we don't see any contradiction in them. Some people may hold all of them. Some people may hold one of them. Some people may hold three of them. It doesn't matter. Uh, we know the hedges that the uh, that the bounds of the Orthodox Church and what it's taught, and we don't go outside of that. But inside that, there's there's a multiplicity, just as inside God there's a multiplicity. So these silly things. I just wanted to make another thing on uh, just speaking really quickly. Uh, I have heard it that the Ark of the Covenant, actually the cherubim, were actually spheres and not animals. Not actually, uh, basically like the Sphinx, a winged creature. I don't know how a sphere can extend wings. Um, no. Uh, on the very altar of God, there were gold, carved and molten images covering the mercy seat. This was... This what it was making up the mercy seat. That's where the Holy Spirit dwelled. He carved images of created, or well, no, I even created things in the heavens, the the mythical creatures, the cherubim. Um, whether that's a form of angel, I don't know. The body of a of a bull, the wings of a eagle, the head of a man. We see these types of things in Babylon too. Common thing in Mesopotamia. Uh, to cite a 2nd century, and it might even been 3rd century, let's say 2nd century source that's telling you about this, at least 700 years after the Ark had disappeared from everywhere. Uh, last mention of it, if we were to say, well, under Manasseh it was taken away, it's probably about 
eight, nine hundred years. Um, but definitely after the sack of Jerusalem, it's gone. Now, I personally believe that afterwards they brought it down to Elephantine Island and then it got down to Axum. I don't believe the story of Menelik at all or it was under Solomon, but I think it was brought down there and then they developed that story since they already had a biblical link with the land. Um, but this theory that it's spheres is the most ridiculous, obscene thing. Uh, also, if you believe that worshipping something is averting your eyes from it, but you're still against icons because it's worshiping images, then no, because when we kiss an image, we see it. So it's we're respecting it. It's respectful. It's uh, reverence, not adoration. Uh, so I just wanted to answer those two things because I heard those brought up, and I, I just it was just a total face palm of like, eh, what on earth? Um, you know, if I were to describe what you know. Let's see, um, a building that doesn't exist anymore, that's 700 years old, and uh, all, the, all, the, uh, all the reports of it are completely different than what I'm describing. Do you go with what I'm describing, or do you go with what the actual reports say? The cherubim, and it's, the cherubim is used in many other different places. They were winged creatures, body of a beast, head of a man. Um, that's what a cherubim is. Or some people just say, well, it's a bird because it's a winged creature. Even if it's a bird with outstretched wings, that's a, it's a creature that's, it's a molten, it's a carved and molten thing because it was made out of acacia wood and then covered in metal. Covered in gold. So, um, iconoclasts kind of lose on that one, unless they want to just say, oh, it's all the Demiurge, and Moses was never, was never allowed to create the Ark, and it wasn't God speaking to him when he crafted the serpent, and peace to you, may God save Serbia and Syria. Just some talks on ransom theory, the Ark, and uh, icons.